Today we got options from $6 all the way to 60. <laughs> that could be a blooper, right? <laughs> I've been wanting to do a comprehensive thermal pad analysis for a while now. So when my friend Andrew said that his GPU was thermal throttling, I took it as the perfect opportunity to go out and spend $400, I mean, uh, buy all these thermal pads right here and do a complete analysis. Have you ever shopped online for thermal pads? We got all these thermal pads right here. And when you go on the internet and look up thermal pads for let's say a 3090, you see all these results. It's so confusing. And when you go to the forums and stuff, you never see any actual information on what to do, just opinions. So we got everything here. We got the cheapest thermal pads at $6 all the way to $66 and everything in between right here. Are the more expensive pads worth it? Or are the $6 pads a good alternative? Going on the test bench today is the mythical, the magical RTX 3090 Founders Edition. These cards have been known to come from the factory with less than adequate thermal pads. But how do you even know which thermal pads to buy? There are different brands, thicknesses, hardnesses, and watts per meter Kelvin. So where do you begin comparing these pads? Right here in this video. Today we have eight different thermal pads we're gonna put head to head from cheapest to most expensive. We're comparing all the major pads to establish the best performer and the best value to help you decide what you want to put on your card. In a moment, we're going to put the 3090 on the test bench to get some baseline numbers. But before that, Andrew's going to tell us a bit more about these thermal pads. So the main things you will see when shopping for thermal pads are thickness, hardness, thermal conductivity, and of course price. If you had a brand in mind for when you do your thermal pads, stay tuned until the end of the video because some of these results end up being pretty interesting. The thickness of all the pads in this video will be 1.5 millimeter, matching the pads that the 3090 Founders Edition comes with. You can find a variety of different thicknesses on the market depending on your needs, 0.5 millimeters through three millimeters. In 99% of cases, you will want to replace your thermal pads with the same thickness as the pads already on there. If you go with a thinner pad, you run the risk of not fully contacting either the memory chip itself or the cooler. If you use too thick of a pad, you might end up being thick enough to prevent the GPU die from contacting the cooler. Neither scenario is good, so best practice is to match the thickness of the pad you are replacing. Most of that information can be found on the internet by searching for your specific model card online, but you can physically measure as well using a caliper. Now onto hardness. Thermal pads are measured on the Shore 00 hardness scale for gels and soft rubbers. To put it in perspective, a 10 on the scale would be the hardness of a gummy bear, and 80 would be that of a pencil eraser. The thermal pads may have a hardness spec to help understand whether it has the ability to compress and spread out, or if it's going to maintain its original form and resist compression. Thermal conductivity, measured in watts per meter Kelvin, is an indicator of implied performance capabilities. The higher the number should mean the better it transfers heat from the memory to the cooler, but depending on the heat source, that may or may not prove true. It comes down to testing methods the manufacturers use to produce their claims, which may not be consistent across brands. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the basics now. Before we swap out our pads, let's get some baseline tests with the card completely stock. In stock form, mining Ethereum at plus 1500 MHz on the VRAM, the card reached a maximum memory junction temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, leveling out to about 98 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of mining. We don't have any specific details about what the stock pads are exactly, so specs like shore hardness and thermal conductivity are unavailable. However, we can take a look at them. Upon disassembly, we see the white thermal pads that stick to either the card or the cooler. If you were to take apart your card to repaste the core, you may be able to get away with not replacing the thermal pads and just reassemble it as is. But any attempt at removing the factory thermal pads will result in them becoming completely unusable. These pads contain fibers and resemble a kind of thick paste held together more than a completely solid piece. You can see they fall apart in pieces when removing and leave quite a bit of mess to clean up. After finding a relatively intact pad, I measured the thickness to be about 1.5 millimeters uncompressed with a digital caliper, and compressing and releasing the pad resulted in what I will refer to as a rebound thickness of about 1.2 millimeters. So let's talk about testing methodology. To test the performance of the thermal pads, we are swapping only the thermal pads on the 24 GDDR6 memory modules. This is to control 
that the only variable we are actively changing is how well heat is transferring from the memory to the cooler. Thermal paste on the core will be replaced each time the card is disassembled using Noctua NT-H1 thermal paste. All memory modules and cooler surfaces will be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol when switching pads. Initial tests will be done with the fans locked to 100% for consistency and to remove the fan curve as variable. We are going to be monitoring the memory junction temperature while mining Ethereum. The reason we are using mining for our testing is that it has proven to stress the memory to the point of thermal throttling on many GDDDR6X cards in the past year. We have the memory of this card overclocked to plus 1500 MHz using MSI Afterburner, and we have also locked the GPU core to 1200 MHz at 725 millivolts. We are maintaining ambient temperature to 74 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 23 degrees Celsius, and the card is on an open air test bench. It is important to note that we are using a Founders Edition 3090, and that different brands use different thermal pads with varying qualities and performance, so this is a test comparing the thermal pads to each other and to the stock Founders Edition pads, but not necessarily to the pads on your brand of card. Make sense? Great. Now let's check out the replacement pads. We will be testing the thermal pads in today's video in order of claimed thermal conductivity. First on the list are the Unuon pads from AliExpress. These claim a thermal conductivity of 3.2 watts per meter Kelvin and come with 72 15 by 15 millimeter pads pre-cut. So without additional cutting, they include enough for 72 memory modules. Hardness is unlisted. These are also the cheapest pads we will be testing, coming in at only $5.82 total. Measuring the pads with a the caliper, they have an uncompressed thickness of 1.5 millimeters and a rebound thickness of 1.3 millimeters. Application is very straightforward given that they are the only pads that are pre-cut. Unfortunately, the praise stops there as we quickly find that these pads perform worse than stock, peaking as high as 106 degrees Celsius memory junction temperature, sustaining 104 after 15 minutes of mining. Upon removal, the pads are still intact and could potentially be removed and reused. The AI Akinuo pads from Amazon have a claimed thermal conductivity of 6 watts per meter Kelvin. They come as an uncut 100 by 100 millimeter square pad, which is enough to cover 59 memory modules. Hardness is unlisted. These are the second cheapest pads in the test at $5.99. Measuring the pads, they are 1.5 millimeters uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.3 millimeters. Since these will need to be cut, I cut out 24 12 by 14 millimeter pads to cover each memory module on the 3090. Testing shows that these perform slightly better than stock, showing a peak and sustained memory junction temperature of 96 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of mining, an improvement of 2 degrees Celsius. Upon removal, the pads are still intact and could potentially be removed and reused. The next pad in our test is the Thermal Grizzly Minus Pad 8. Implied by the name, these claim a thermal conductivity of 8 watts per meter Kelvin. They come as an uncut 100 by 100 millimeter square, enough to cover 59 memory modules. Hardness is listed as 60 on the Shore 00 scale. The price for this pad is $36.95 for the size listed. They measure 1.5 millimeters uncompressed and 1.2 millimeters rebound thickness respectively. They are uncut and I cut 24 12 by 14 millimeter pads to cover the memory modules. These pads show a peak and sustained memory junction temperature of 92 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of mining, an improvement of 6 degrees Celsius versus stock. Removal of the pads shows they are still intact and could potentially be reused. Up next are the Fuji Poly Extreme XE pads which claim 11 watts per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. To do the 24 memory modules on the 3090 for the lowest possible price, two sizes were ordered, 60 by 50 millimeters and 100 by 15 millimeters for a total of 4,500 square millimeters of pad, enough to do 26 memory modules. Hardness is listed as 50 on the Shore 00 scale. The price for the two sizes combined comes to $47.98 and they measure 1.5 millimeters uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.3. The 60 by 50 millimeter pad was cut into 16 separate 15 by 12.5 millimeter pads and the 100 by 15 millimeter pad was cut into 8 15 by 12.5 millimeter pads, therefore not leaving any excess. These pads show an improvement over the previous again with a peak memory junction temperature of 90 degrees Celsius and sustained of 88 degrees after 15 minutes of mining, an improvement of 10 degrees Celsius over the stock pads. The pads are intact on removal. 
The Thermalrite Extreme Odyssey pads are next, claiming 12.8 watts per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. These come as an uncut 85 by 45 millimeter pad, which was cut into 24 11.3 by 14.2 millimeter pads. Hardness is listed as 47.5 on the Shore 00 scale, the softest in the test. The price for the size ordered is $15.99. Measuring with a caliper, these pads are 1.3 millimeters uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.1, making them the thinnest pads in the test. It seems that some combination of the pads being thin or soft results in poor mounting pressure as these pads only manage to match the stock pads with a sustained memory junction temperature of 98 degrees Celsius, despite being 12.8 watts per meter Kelvin. Removing the pads was possible with care, though be careful not to tear them due to them being thinner. The Jelly GP Ultimate pads are next. They claim 15 watts per meter Kelvin and come uncut as a 90 by 50 millimeter pad for $14.99. That's enough area for 26 memory modules, though they were cut into 24 15 by 12.5 millimeter pads leaving no excess. Hardness is listed as 65 on the Shore 00 scale and they measure 1.5 millimeters uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.3. These end up producing an impressive result, reducing memory junction temperature to 84 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of mining, an improvement of 14 degrees Celsius over stock. Removal and reuse seems possible, though being some of the thinner pads, they may tear if care is not taken. Next are the NB Supermax pads from NAB Cooling. They claim 15 watts per meter Kelvin, and they come uncut as a 90 by 50 millimeter pad for $11.69. That's enough area for 26 memory modules, though they were cut into 24 15 by 125 millimeter pads, leaving no excess. Hardness is listed at 65 on the Shore 00 scale, and they measure 1.45 millimeters uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.3. If those specs sound familiar, they are identical to the specs given for the Jelly GP Ultimate pads, and if we look at the packaging side by side, you can see they are almost a verbatim copy. It would seem as though these two brands share a common supplier. Testing reveals a sustained memory junction temperature of 84 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of mining, a 14 degrees Celsius improvement over stock, identical to the Gelid's result. Removal and reuse seems possible with care. For the final pad in the test, we have the Fuji Poly Ultra Extreme XR-M, which claim 17 watts per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. To do the 24 memory modules on the 3090 for the lowest possible price, two sizes were ordered, 60 by 50 millimeter and 100 by 15 millimeter, for a total of 4,500 square millimeters of pad, enough to do 26 memory modules. Hardness is listed as 80 on the Shore 00 scale, the hardest in the test. The price for the two sizes combined comes to $66.48, making them the most expensive pad today. They measure 1.5 millimeter uncompressed with a rebound thickness of 1.3. The 60 by 50 millimeter pad was cut into 16 separate 15 by 12.5 millimeter pads, and the 100 by 15 millimeter pad was cut into 8 15 by 12.5 millimeter pads, therefore leaving no excess. These pads reduced sustained memory junction temperature to 84 degrees Celsius, matching the Gelid and the NAB cooling pads with a 14 degree reduction versus stock. Let's put all this together and see the pads side by side. First, we have the shore hardness for the different pads today without the U Nuon and AI Akinuo since they did not specify a hardness rating. Next, we see the pad thickness as measured with the caliper. They all fall relatively close to stock, the exception being the thermal ride pads, which were significantly thinner than the rest. Next, we take a look at price. If you have a single 3090, this is how much it would cost to repad it with the thermal pads we used. We tried to find the most cost-effective pad sizes to do this, though some pads purchased do give you more material than you need for a single card. Here you can see the overall area of thermal pads included for the previous price. So this is something to consider if you are planning to repad more than just the memory modules or if you have multiple cards. Putting this together, we have the cost per GDDR6X memory module. This is simply the price to do a single 12 by 14 millimeter memory chip based on the price of the pad and the area included. Here you can see the sustained memory junction temperatures for each of the pads in today's test. With the exception of the Thermalrite pads, the rest performed about as expected based on the claims of the manufacturer, though the 17 watt per meter Kelvin Fuji Poly pads did not show an improvement over the 15 watt per meter Kelvin Gelids or NABs. And here is memory temperature reduction versus stock. 
From this, we can deduce that the factory founders edition pads perform somewhere between 3.2 watt per meter Kelvin and 6 watt per meter Kelvin pads. So this test has established relative performance between pads in terms of cooling the GDDDR6X memory on a 3090 founders edition. In terms of value, you can take a look at how much each pad costs in terms of reducing memory temperature. So this is how many dollars you are paying for each 1 degree Celsius improvement achieved on memory junction temperature. With the AI Akinuo pads, there is not a large improvement in performance like some of the other pads. However, based on the price and amount included, you may consider this for a basic repad job if you are swapping thermal paste already and not aiming for more performance, but rather an original equipment replacement to maintain stock performance at the lowest price. But the thing that stands out here are the three on the right, which all performed nearly identically in reducing memory temperature by 14 degrees, and they all came with 4,500 square millimeters of material. But the NAB cooling and B Supermax pads cost less than 20% the cost of the Fuji Poly Ultra Extremes. So that was the point of the test, right? Well, yes, but there is more to it. After completing initial tests with the fans at 100% for consistency, we tested again with the fan set to auto to see what kind of reduction and fan speed could be expected with the various pads and therefore get a sense of if lower noise would be achieved. With the stock fan curve, memory was sitting around 96 to 98 degrees Celsius for the best performing pads and between 102 and 104 for the cheaper and stock pads after 15 minutes of mining. The resulting sustained fan speeds can be seen here. So it would seem the fan speed is lower for the better performing pads. That makes sense and absolutely was noticeable audibly. With the Unuons triggering the stock fan curve to go to 100% at times, the 97% sustained fan speed is pretty deafening. So while these pads might be adequate for some lower end cards, they have no place being on a 3090. With the general trend of lower fan speeds with the better thermal pads, I was curious how that would affect GPU core temp. And when I took a look at the data, I was kind of blown away. With the fan speed on auto, the tests with the three best performing pads showed a core temperature increase of 21 to 23 degrees. That is a significant amount of extra temperature on the core. So what's going on? I thought these pads were supposed to be better. Well, that's the thing. They are better at transferring heat from the memory to the cooler and reducing memory temperature. However, this reveals that there is a relationship between the memory temperature and the GPU core temperature. The heat transferred from the memory ultimately is being held in the heat sink, and some of that heat is then transferred to the other cooler components on the card, in this case, the GPU die itself. If we reference the second law of thermodynamics, heat flows from a hot object to a cool object, and therefore, if the heat being transferred from the memory to the heat sink raises the temperature of the heatsink itself significantly, it then has the potential to raise the temperature of any cooler objects the heatsink is in contact with. And we see just that. At 2.5 watts per module, the 24 gigabytes of GDDDR6X produces about 60 watts of heat, and when coupled with an overclock and an effective thermal pad, a good amount of that heat is transferred to the cooler. So what does this all mean? Well, it raises the question, what are we trying to achieve by swapping thermal pads? Obviously, we want to reduce memory temperatures, which can then lead to higher overclocks or eliminate thermal throttling, depending on the situation. But we are now more aware of this relationship between reducing memory junction temperature and increasing GPU core temperature. With these findings, I think a follow-up video is warranted in the future. One thing I would like to take a look at is the addition of RAM syncs to the backplate over the backside memory modules. I know there are mixed opinions on the efficacy of such heat sinks on GPUs, but it would make sense that they would actually prove much more effective at removing heat from the card after it has already been repadded and is more efficiently transferring heat to the backplate in the first place. So let us know if there's something you would like to see, if there is anything else you would like to take a look at, leave your question in the comments below. With that, back to you Shinji. Thanks Andrew. Well, there you have it. We've been wanting to do an in-depth thermal pad video for a while now, and this 3090 was the perfect test subject. I hope this information was helpful to any of you considering buying thermal pads. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. If you like what you saw in this video, consider getting subscribed and checking out my other videos, like my recent StreamCom build. And if you want to get in touch with me, I am a founder of the Misfit Mining Discord. Link in the description below. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!